I want to know how many of you have heard uh, nanotechnology, the term nanotechnology. And how many of you know what is that size? We talk about tiny size in terms of uh, the physical perspective. How does it uh, sense like? How many of you know that? Well, very simple experiment. Why don't you, we all touch our hair without disturbing the hairstyle. And I want you to divide the width or the thickness of your hair by 100,000 times. So just imagine, calculate will not help here. So the size that you're thinking about, as tiny as 100,000 times smaller than the width of human hair, that's the size we are talking about. These are really tiny, tiny nanoparticles, very tiny objects. Almost everything what you see around can be broken down to that size. Some of them are more useful than others. So when we talk about nanoparticles, some of you may have heard nanoparticles of gold, silver, and whatnot. So these nanoparticles have suddenly become ubiquitous to human life because, as you're seeing on the first slide, nanoparticles are there, or if they're not there, they will be there in modern medicine, in telecommunications, in, in the automotive industry, in the, in, the, in the kind of clothing that uh, you're going to wear. So like it or not, nanoparticles would be embedded in our lives. Therefore, it is imperative that we create this, not a virtual classroom, I would like to create a societal classroom, a classroom where kitchen might serve as a laboratory, a classroom where mom and dad and the kids will be the students, as well as the teachers. When you talk about nanoparticles, nanotechnology, we want to keep it simple. We want to make it simple in ways that you don't need complicated instructions to turn the light bulb on. Although Thomas Edison, when he discovered, it was a marvelous technology. It was a very complicated technology to get to, to uh, where he was at that point of time. But now, we don't follow instructions to turn the light on. Can we become participants of nano revolution in ways everything might become seamless? Before I continue, I want to perform a very simple experiment. I want you, uh, four volunteers to add tea powder to water. Very simple experiment. So we are starting from kitchen. So just, just volunteer. So there are four flasks here. What we are doing here, I have taken water and added this uh, yellow looking solution. This is the gold salt, okay? You can call it as liquid gold. If you convert your golden ring that you're wearing into its salt, it becomes water soluble. So this is a gold precursor. We're trying to prepare nanoparticles in kitchen by adding tea powder to gold salt. It's not a complicated science. You can go and sit down. Thank you. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's not a complicated science. The, the indication that we are producing nanoparticles, you'll see in a couple of minutes, the solution will turn burgundy red or wine red. That's the indication that we are producing nanoparticles. So what is the big deal? It's a big deal because nanoparticles will find ways into medicine. It's almost like a GPS system. We are talking about injecting nanoparticles in human beings to detect these deadly diseases, lung cancer, prostatic cancer, pancreatic cancer in early stages, because they are so tiny. They are significantly tinier than human cells. So what does that tell you? We can target individual cells if we have these nanoparticles. So that technological luxury we didn't have before the nano revolution. Likewise, once detected, we can treat, we can treat we can treat individuals with the different types of cancer. Scientists, non-scientists, everybody has to be part of the nano revolution. How do we make that happen? We need to bring, up, bring out that connection between kitchen and the high tech. So can we create nanoparticles using soybeans? Yes, 
we can create nanoparticles using soybeans. I'm going to show you. We created nanoparticles. It takes about two hours. That's why I did that experiment this morning. There are, I mixed gold salt with uh, soybeans and created nanoparticles. Can we create nanoparticles using cinnamon? Yes. It's all there in the kitchen. You're not talking about toxic chemicals. You're not talking about some toxic gases coming out. You can see already the, the color change is happening. What's happening, you'd be surprised. Cinnamon, soybean, or tea, they all have very useful chemicals that, that the human body likes. They have antioxidants. Antioxidants are chemicals that are rich in electrons. You need electrons to convert metal salts into nanoparticles. It's a very simple concept. All of us know antioxidants. You don't need to be a scientist for that. It's good for the body. They, they, they go and scavenge those bad free radicals from the body. So we are trying to use what, is, what has existed in human chain or in, in human food chain for over 5,000 years. We're trying to use that, connect that to high tech, to create nanoparticles, and nanoparticles will make their way into varieties of different products we use. Cell phones, automotive industry, telecommunication industry, medicine. So again, look at the connectivity here. We have not created a panacea for cancer yet, but gold nanoparticles are already showing tremendous promise for treating cancers. What is the origin? They might originate, they might start from the kitchen by simple chemicals that are there in our human food chain. We, by mixing them with uh, gold salt, we are able to create gold nanoparticles. Uh, I don't know how many of you are able to see the, the colorless solution is turning purple. It's a, it's a reflection is very clear here. Uh, basically, uh, this, has, this has surprised everybody. Uh, news anchors came to our lab and performed experiments. As you can see there, by mixing cinnamon sticks with gold salt, almost instantly we are able to produce that purple coloration indicating the formation of gold nanoparticles. And this is the concept that I would like to advocate in the future. High technology is not, should not be just limited to those sophisticated labs. We have to embed, we have to involve society right from the word go, right from its uh, stages of infancy. So that's why it's, it's a powerful concept that Matt is advocating, breaking the traditional concept of a classroom, create a classroom through society. It involves chemists, scientists, non-scientists, physicists, everybody. And the power of this type of a classroom is the origination of ideas. So far, about 10, 15% of the world population are scientists, okay? About maybe 10 or 12%. What if people with limited or no background in science begin to think about revolutionary ideas to come up with treatment for deadly diseases? What if people with limited background in engineering or science start thinking about ideas about telecommunication. What if society starts thinking about alternative forms of energy with minimal or no pollution? Then we are talking about a technological marvel we have never seen before. And that's the power, again, of green nanotechnology. And that's the power of this new concept of societal classroom or the universal classroom.